One of the two types of playlists within Huddle Sports Code is known as the organizer. In this video, we're going to run through several features within the organizer that will allow us to use this playlist to create our final presentation, whether it be for a scout, post game review, or even individual film. However way you choose to send the clips to the organizer, they're going to appear as rows down here at the bottom, categorized by the code that they came from. From here, we can begin to start to watch these clips and we'll have this play bar here that allows us to run through it. We're able to toggle a few different things from this menu here, such as how we play back the film, whether or not we want instance text to appear, whether or not we want our drawing toolbar to appear, and if we want to mute the film. We also can go full screen from the organizer up here at the top using this icon. Now the first thing we may want to do within this playlist, within this organizer, is trim the clips so that we display exactly what we're trying to in our presentation. The first step to doing this is first we want to select all our clips that we want to trim all at once. Once we have them selected, we can switch to edit mode, which is this icon up at the top here. Once we switch to edit mode, a blue bar is going to appear, which this is currently representing the first clip in this row here. To trim this clip, we can look at the beginning of the clip on the left side here and the end of the clip on the right side here, and we can drag it exactly where we want that clip to begin. As soon as I release my cursor, it has now saved that this is exactly when this clip will begin, and now we can do the same for the end of the clip. If we ever need to add a lot of time back onto a clip, we'll have the option to add time and we can keep getting more space to add that time after each time we release our cursor. The benefit of selecting all the clips is now I can click tab and it will jump to the second clip in our selection, allowing us to efficiently trim all the clips in our playlist. Once we have finished trimming, we can switch back to view mode. And those trims have been saved to each clip. Once we have trimmed the clips, now we can start to organize this playlist to become the presentation in the order that we want to display everything. To do so, we can create new rows that can basically operate like the chapters of our playlist. To do so, we can use this icon down at the bottom. And so a basic example might be, if we're going to cover offensive sets, defensive concepts, and individual film. From here, we can select each clip we can look at the clip data if we have any notes or labels that can help us understand where we're going to add or categorize these clips. And once we know where they're going to go, we can just select them and drag them down to the each new row that we've created. Now that we have our clips in those chapters, we can delete our original row. And now we have started to form our first presentation. From here, you can see we have already renamed these rows, but we also can go to Edit Row and change the color of them if we wanted to. Now how this playlist will work is it's going to start in the first row. It will play left to right. So this clip, then this clip. Then it will go to the second row and then the third row. So any way that you organize your playlist will always go left to right first and then to the next chapter.
Now from here, you also can disable a row using these eye icons on the left side. This would allow us to skip a section, such as if we put together a playlist that we may show over a few days, but we may not show one section on the first day, for example. Now that this defensive section is grayed out, when we select all our clips, you'll see it will go through the offensive clips and then skip to individual. The next step that we may do is add a slide to our playlist. There are three different ways that we can do this within the organizer. The first way is using another program called Keynote, where we can open up a presentation we've put together in Keynote, select the thumbnail we wish to, and then all we have to do is then drag it into the window to add them. If you prefer to use another program, as long as you can export or create a screenshot in a JPEG or other picture format, you can also drag in those files from Finder. Such as if we had made this slide in PowerPoint, we would export them, and now we can drag them in the same way from Finder. Using another program, will allow us to do this efficiently and add pictures and customize exactly how we want that slide to look. If we want to make more basic slides within sports code, we have the option to do so. For example, if we wanted to add a title slide to the beginning of this row here, we can click this icon down at the bottom to add a blank slide. Once we add that slide, you'll see on the side, we have the option to change the background color. And then using our drawing tools and using the text tool, we then can just add text to this slide. After we draw in the text box, you'll see on the side we have options to customize the font, the color, and even the size of that text. Regardless of these two options, you also can change the duration. As it stands by default, these will play for three seconds, like a three second clip, but we can customize this in the playback menu up to 60 seconds. The third way to make slides has a little bit less customization at our disposal in what we call titles. Titles is always off by default in this column here. If we'd like to turn it on, we can click the eye icon and that is going to create a black background, white text slide, whatever the name of the row is. So if we wanted to rename it, it would then update immediately. But the only other thing that we can customize with this type of slide is the background color. If we would like to change the font or anything like that, we would have to use this other option. And these also will always be three seconds by default. That can also not be customized. Now I also mentioned our drawing tools earlier. Within our drawing toolbar, we have a number of options that can allow you to add drawing as you're going through and teaching on your playlist. For example, we could add an arrow to represent a pass. And you'll see on the side that we have different options to customize how this arrow looks. We also could add a box if we wanted to or a circle. There's also the option for freehand draw. And then finally, similar to how we added it in our slide earlier, we can add text as well. As soon as we add a drawing, a white line then appears here to let us know that when we get to that moment in this clip, there will be a pause and it's going to stay at that pause until we click play 
to keep going. If we ever wanted to, we could delete all our objects and that will remove the pause from this clip. And now we see there's no longer a white line. Our last steps that we may do within the organizer is first we may choose to save this file, which we have the option to save as a reference and standalone, which is covered in another video within this channel. And we also can upload to our Huddle account if we wish to, so that we can share it on our Huddle account. From this menu, we are able to rename the playlist, choose how we want to share it, add any custom labels, and also choose if we want anything to export, whether it be our instance text, any drawings that we've conducted will be known as effects here, and then our slides and titles as well.